I'm Duncan McHugh in Vancouver. Before occupiers took over Wall Street, before Occupy crept across America, then exploded around the world, the idea, hashtag Occupy Wall Street, began here. Adbusters, an anti-corporate magazine known for culture jamming. At the time, the man behind the meme was reluctant to become the face of a movement. But one year later, he's reflecting on what it all meant. I'll have a full story tonight on The National on the anniversary of Occupy. But here's a few excerpts of my conversation with Kelly Lassen of Adbusters. It was a very provocative move. You know, this idea that we're going to occupy the iconic heart of global capitalism and we the people are going to take it over. I knew that Occupy uh, Wall Street would be a big event because as soon as we uh, launched that uh, hashtag Occupy Wall Street and said that the people have to do this on September 17th, then the internet went crazy and I could feel that something really big was going to happen there. Uh, but then, you know, uh, when it started uh, creeping, uh, when suddenly there was a few dozen occupations throughout America and then it crept across the, the border to Canada and when there was an explosion of a thousand occupations all around the world, then in our office we just threw up our hands and said that's a gift from the gods, you know, that this, we never really expected it to be that big. That initial phase was very magical. It, it, uh, you can criticize it for not having any... Uh, any clear goals and not having any leaders and, and, and being sort of a puff that suddenly disappeared. And yet, you know, that during the, the four or five or six months when Occupy was alive, hundreds of thousands of young people around the world got politicized. They rubbed shoulders, they slept in parks, they talked to each other, they tried to come up with a new model of democracy. They came up with ideas like 1% and 99%. They changed the national conversation, in, in the, the, the national narrative, the, the way people talked on TV about politics. We started a, a, a movement without, uh, you know, by being horizontal, by having no leaders, by having no initial demands, by just getting together and saying, let's talk about what we want. Let's just talk for three hours and, and decide what sort of a future we want to have. Let's, let's decide what is true democracy really all about. What does it mean to live in a world where corporations are always running the show and we the people have no power? And so there was a wonderful sort of fresh moment of let's throw everything away and start from zero. And that was the magic of Occupy, the original magic of Occupy. But then after that, all of a sudden, you know, Ben and Jerry came in there and started giving some money to some of the groups. And then there was suddenly a newspaper that was started and it needed some money. And, <clears throat> and before you know it, the labor unions were there, you know, coming up with 10,000 people and helping to march. And, and lo and behold, you know, a few months later, the old left had taken hold again. Uh, and this magical moment that the new left uh, had created, uh, this new horizontal left, all of a sudden they they were left in the cold and didn't quite know what to do. I noticed even right from the start, as soon as some of the organizers came to see me uh, in the, you know, before the, 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 the Occupy Vancouver even started, I could feel that the, the quality of these people, the, it wasn't, it didn't have the quality, the original quality of, of, of Zuccotti, uh, of the people that were doing it in Zuccotti. They weren't true revolutionaries. They were just old lefties who were still strutting the same old, old lefty line, uh, which has, hasn't worked for 30, 40 years. So, I, I saw the Occupy movement as being sort of a, a battle between the old left and the new left, the, the old vertical left and the new horizontal left. Uh, and uh, in many occupations, the old left finally won and the new left just, just, just went away. One thing that didn't change, I mean, there was very much the focus at the beginning on financial systems and the banks mm. and corporate greed. But in terms of, uh, you know, one of the ideas I know that you had was, was with regard to the Robin Hood tax, for example. Mm, mm. Those kinds of, of system changes didn't happen. No, of course they didn't happen. And, uh, but they will happen, I believe. Uh, what do you expect from the first phase of a movement? If you look at the history of revolutions, you'll find out that it sometimes it takes five, ten years before real change happens. Um, and I think the same will happen with this, uh, this movement. Um, I think that uh, Robin Hood taxes, the Robin Hood tax is, is, uh, is something that will be one of the fruits of this movement. Um, but it's going to take another year or two. Uh, what kind of things are we going to see in the second phase? I think in the second phase uh, in the United States of America we'll see campaign finance reform. Uh, we will see the, the launch of, uh, of what I call blue, green, black hybrid political parties. 
uh, we will see globally the, the uh, some sort of a 1% tax, a Robin Hood tax on all financial transactions and currency trades. Uh, I think that uh, we will see a kind of a, a grassroots feistiness. Perhaps will you know these big bang moments of, of Occupy Wall Street will disappear, but I think that we will have perhaps a, a kind of Occupy Main Street, where if, if one bank, somebody in a community is doing something bad and the people don't like it, then they're going to start protesting and putting up flyers on top of that bank, and, and, and they're going to start demanding a conversation with the manager of that bank, and, and, and they're just going to start a, a sort of a grassroots movement in communities all around the world for, for, having, for creating some sort of a community that works. And for me personally, I think one of the really big things that could happen uh, in the wake of, in, in the second or possibly the third phase of, of uh, Occupy is that uh, the students, the economic students uh, all around the world will rise up and start talking back against their professors. One could argue that the system change hasn't happened, you know, in terms of, of reshaping the paradigm, that in fact Occupy was really just a, an incredibly successful branding exercise by ad busters. Hashtag Occupy. I mean, it took off. Mm -hmm. Is it more than, a, than, than branding a feeling? Well, I think it is a feeling. But you know that the, the core impulse behind the Occupy movement is this, this feeling that hundreds of millions of young people have around the world that their future does not compute that for the next 30, 40, 50 years of their lives will be full of crises, financial, political, economic crisis. They will not be able to pay off their student loans. They may never have a decent full-time job. They will not be able to live their lives like their parents did. That they have to stand up and fight for a different kind of a future. So this is the core impulse that gave rise to, to all those occupations and to everything that's happened since. And that same impulse that the future does not compute is the same thing that's fueling all those things that are happening in, uh, in Quebec and in Russia and, and, and in, in Mexico and in Chile and all kinds of other places. So there's this feeling among young people all around the world that they have to stand up and fight for a different kind of a future. And that is way more than branding. Well, you're still talking about revolution. Absolutely. Uh, I know that this is a sort of an unpopular thing to do, and the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about revolution. In fact, the mainstream media doesn't even like uh, to Occupy, because Occupy is, bas is a basic threat to, to the world as we know it. It's, we're basically asking for a fundamental reform of, of education, of the media, of the financial system, of, the, of big pharma. We, we basically want, we the people, want to take charge and have a radical democracy and stop the, the corporations and the authorities telling us how to run our affairs. Uh, and um, the mainstream culture finds us very threatening. They are very happy to think that, oh, we may have finally disappeared and this original puff may have dis you know, vanished. But we have far from vanished. Uh, our movement has just begun. You can see Occupy as being dead, or you can see Occupy have, as having morphed into a, a global phenomena that if the global economy keeps tanking, and if the crisis of global capitalism keeps on intensifying and deepening, then I believe there's a possibility down the road of a global revolution.